We've all been there before. We're working on a project, struggling to reduce the cost of the bomb bill of materials. We try to do stuff ourselves. After all, you're an engineer. Maybe you have your own staff of engineers, physicists, and anyone else you might need. So if there's a complex part that adds a significant cost to your bomb, you might try to cut corners. Let's see how we can design that ourselves, you'll say. Sound familiar? Let's say that you're integrating a laser into your medical device. You realize sooner or later that you're going to have to include a laser power meter or other sensor for integrated monitoring of the laser. Besides the safety of the patients, in many cases this is required by law. But wait, you know that you can get a cheap photodiode for a few dollars or less. You can design or have your engineers design some electronics. Why would you pay hundreds of dollars for a complete power measurement solution? It seems an easy place to cut a few hundred dollars from the bomb. Not quite. The tricky element here is that we need to compare apples to apples. When we have our bomb blinders on, all we can see is the price of the part. But what about the time and effort to design it? What about when it hits that this isn't as simple as we thought? Sure, you've got a hardware engineer on your team, and he can design a simple amplifier circuit for the detector. Uh, at first, this approach seems to make sense, and the thought of the money trimmed off the bomb is very appealing. Uh, nevertheless, there are a few issues with going down this road of home brewing a sensor. First and foremost, cheap photodiodes have their role, but they're not calibrated. Ophir sensors are calibrated, traceable to a NIST gold standard. Uncalibrated sensors are okay for relative measurements, but they'll never actually give you the true power of the beam. In the medical realm in particular, you'll usually need accurate measurements to pass regulations. What about high power? Photodiodes have a very low power capability. They typically saturate at powers in the milliwatt range, up to hundreds of milliwatts at best. Assuming your laser power is measured in watts, or if not tens of watts, then in order to measure it with a photodiode, you'll need to use attenuation by many orders of magnitude. It's difficult to do this accurately and reproducibly. Also, the attenuation could change as a function of time. It may be affected by polarization concerns. Suddenly, a simple hardware project turns into a full-scale optical design. The solution will have to correct for the photodiode's dependence on temperature and frequency. It'll have to account for batch-to-batch -batch variations among the detectors themselves. What happens when the reading isn't stable? What about when you need to change gain in real time to give your sensor a useful dynamic range? For certain types of detectors, how about a speed-up algorithm to reduce the response time? Addressing these issues will involve costs, which, though not visible on a system bomb, are nevertheless there, and such hidden costs can be higher than one might think. We believe the best approach to creating a new product is this. Focus on your expertise, on the unique added value that you bring to your project. Do all that yourself. Outsource the other stuff, making use of your partner's expertise and unique added value. It'll be cheaper, though it might not seem so at first. And it'll certainly be faster and easier. Contact Ophir via our website or through your local Ophir representative to see how we can best help you with your application. Mm -hmm.